there was definitely some pieces down in there. But fortunately, only one cylinder of the valves were open on. Shove some paper towels down those ports just to keep any more stuff out of them. I want to pull these pipes out of here off the valley cover as I'm going to be changing it. I need to pry back there on them a little bit. They're running through the condenser. I'm going to take the knock sensors off so I can shop back around that valley pan. Looks like oil. I really don't see any antifreeze. That's... Might be a little bit. The drains were stopped up, so it may have been weeping. I wrote bank one and bank two on each set of knock sensors. They was 13 millimeter headed bolts to take them out. Now I'm going to shop back all the trash and scrape it from around that valley pan so it'll end up down in the lower part. I'm going to disconnect those two wires heading down underneath the air conditioner. One's like the oil level sending unit. So I raised the car up. Not to get underneath of it. Looks like the starter wires Plug in there can be unhooked and the oil level sending unit wires can be unhooked to pull them up out of there. Get them things out of there. Now I'll pick this whole freaking mess up and lay it up there on the cow. Bungee cord it back. I went ahead and took the four 10 millimeter bolts out of these seals around the cam solenoids. Just wore them. I sprayed, I sandpapered off the rust. I sprayed some penetrating oil to help lube this seal up coming out of there. I'm going to go ahead and remove the head covers, rocker covers, valve covers, whatever you want to call them. So I can uh, get the engine prepped for top dead center. And I'll be raising the car up so I'm going to get underneath and get access to the special hole to stick the pin into. Just be sure and watch when you're taking the bolts out of the valve cover that there's just like these cap nuts and they're real short and you, you don't want to lose them down in the motor or down in the body somewhere. The, the front ones are regular studs and the rest of them are these little short stay nuts what you're looking at. There's a couple of them that by the head, but most of them are just little stubbies. Bolts just crack them loose and then hold on to them. It's pretty clean inside. Test pin. We're verifying bottom out on that with no meter. Yeah, much more the chain to be against the housing there. It's pretty close. I don't think his tensioner is stuck on this small chain. It's not budging. Offhand, it looks like the timing marks are off. The crank must be 180 out. 
both of these front lobes should be pointing together 45 degrees from each other and they're actually pointing 45 degrees apart down instead of facing up I have to roll the crank around one more time which which is okay because it needs rolled in the direction of rotation anyway and then come to a stop at top dead center initially on the driver's side head cover go ahead and remove this nut to get the battery cable off of it I'd be advised it's probably better just to take the Torx bit screws out of it because the heat has caused this one to be brittle and it's shattered both valve pan covers are off I took a brush and brushed down this center area to minimize the trash that falls in the timing chain area I'm going to stick a plastic hose back in that hole and see if I can drain any extra antifreeze off just to help keep it from running off in the motor and it does have some in there while that's draining I'm going to roll this motor around the top dead center and get these camshafts or lobes pointing at one another at least 45 degrees toward one another before I take this start taking these covers off because this tensioner has to be taken out bolt head right there and I don't want any of these cams where they'll jump when they're slack on the chain it's already got slack in it and this is why I'm in here all these pieces come from that pocket on the driver's side head it was just laying down in there and there was one laying up here on this oil rail the guides exploded down in there it'll be in the oil pan too check the wool returns make sure there ain't pieces down in it I've got it at top dead center on number one I haven't stuck the alignment pin yet I'm going to go ahead and take this tensioner plunger loose. When it is on top dead center, both cam IDs will be facing up. It says E14 on that one and A14 on that one. I'm going to go ahead and change these secondary chains. They kind of look hammered. Put the secondary chains into a half quart oil. And I'm letting the primary chain drain back into an oil container, the excess off of it. Special, special tools galore. Cam alignment tools, special socket block to mount the tensioner arm with uh, this bolt, and there's a crank bolt. This is special tool to time. The passenger side with special tool with knots in it to time the driver side. Pins to hold the retainers down on the tensor arms on the secondary chain. 
and your choice of crank holding pins depending on the motor you got. I'll be using a 62. Okay, I've got to insert this crank pin, which is somewhat of a task. It's in the middle on the bottom, off to the side of the middle on the bottom, I guess. And there's a rubber inspection hole. You can pop it out and look at the end of it while you're trying to line it in the flywheel. And you may have to jiggle the crankshaft around a little bit to get this to drop into the flywheel. And you'll have to turn the steering wheels all the way to the right or left. So that the center drag link will give you clearance to get this over top of it. So I've turned the steering wheel. I'm going to go underneath there. I'll tell you what, I'll bet that holds pretty gristly. I'm going to take some penetrating oil with me to lube it up a little bit. And a light. There's a frame. There's a stabilizer bar and there's the hole. Pop that rubber plug out if you can't get this lined up right. I've got my hand on the ratchet on the crankshaft. A breaker bar would be handy to jiggle it around. Once you got the passenger side first cylinder cam loops pointing toward one another and that roll pin with that mark on the cover stick this thing in there and it took some doing but it's in there took that rubber plug out and you can reach in there with your finger and fill the hole and just keep it in the ballpark around this pin until it goes back in there And it is now at top dead center. Just to confirm that both cam lubes are pointed at one another. The piston's up on top dead center. I'm going to take these oil lines off. by taking these 10 millimeters out of these oil rails. These oiling channels have to be removed so you can get a wrench on the hex head on the camshaft to adjust them to the tool and to hold them as a backup so you can tighten these bolts in the front. Cover your spark plug holes up. You don't want to drop any of these little 10 millimeter nuts down into the cylinder. I marked an E with an arrow pointing forward on the exhaust oil rail and an I pointing forward on this rail. That will identify it as up and forward and which bank it goes on, which camshaft. I don't know if they're any different or not. Do both sides same. That pin is aligning with that mark. Now I'll take this tensioner plunger out. I've went ahead and stuck these secondary tensioner pins in to hold them down. Made the chain slack on the secondary chain. coming out of it. I'm going to go ahead and take these upper covers off. One, two, three bolts here. And one, two, three bolts there. Same on this side. Take both these front covers off. That is the back side. There's the bolts are a couple of different sizes there, so I'm gonna go ahead and strap the wire that tensioner up against the chain. Yeah, 
just for shits and giggles. Next thing is to install this special tool on the head. There's two bolt holes. And then screw this threaded bolt into the back of it to hold this tension arm up. I use a couple of bolts out of the cover. Make sure there's at least a quarter inch of them sticking out of the back of this block. And I took a slack out of the tensioner so the chain's rigid. I've got a backup wrench on this hex head on the camshaft. I've got an inch and a sixteenth on there. It's up pretty good. I'm going to take this nut off the fastener. It's left threads. These sensor wheel nuts are 24 millimeter or 15 16 so fit it. And they're, every, like I say, everything's left thread. So you're going to have to tighten this one to take it loose. And it's loose. Say I've already took these nuts loose. This one wasn't on very hard at all. Hold this hex head on the camshaft. And then a T55 Torx bit. Remember this is all left threads. And break this bolt loose on the exhaust rocket. And then this intake Venus hold down deal or Venus Torx bit on the intake cam. As I say I went ahead and put my tensioner pins in. That way I can measure how much stress I'm putting on the rest of the parts so I don't stress that crank holding pin or anything out by this chain will wiggle. This setup I'm using, these things are in there hard, like 90 pounds on this outer sprocket and 80 foot pounds on the inner one, or 110 newton meters on the inner sprocket and 125 newton meters on the outer sprocket. I've got the wrench centered up. It is at a little bit of an angle, but it'll hold it. Got a pipe on it, pipe on this one. Do all four of them out of the way. There's a hex head on the back on the intake cam. It's up front on the exhaust. Just take that nut loose. The threads you gotta push toward the inner side on this side and then pull fender on this side. All bolts go in this direction. Make sure you lay your stuff up on the side you took it off of. I've loosened all four of these bolts a half a turn.